People say nothing is impossible, but I do nothing every day. Live from Rochester, New York, this is FC3's Monkey Business, your one-stop shop for everything geeky, and everything can be geeky if you love it enough. Starring the tumbly Tanya Metris, the sedentary Billy DeTori, the ever ebullient Daniel Carmen, and I, the ow, I heard Christopher Frank. It's nice to see you guys today. I'm hoping <laughs> everything is doing well for everybody. <laughs> I, I like you that. hurt today. I do a little bit, just a little bit. Just at the um, the injection site on my shoulder, it's just not going away. And Tylenol did not have anything that you couldn't have, couldn't touch it. It just it's this constant little ache. You should right be able to shoulder. take Advil today. They were saying don't do it for like a couple of days. Is what oh, really? Saying. And, and I'm and I'm okay with that, you know. It's it's not like this is a debilitating pain in any way. Shape it's or just it, it sore, feels like yeah. a like a like a pulled muscle or a sore. You're like, yeah, but it just it, in you, one spot. Spot. Yep. And depending on how you move your arm, you're like, ow. But yeah. Then if you move it back, you're like, okay, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, that okay. This is where I have to keep my arm. Also, rolling over onto it in the middle of the night was definitely an enlightening experience. Oh, I bet it was. So I've had dose one. Tanya, you're two, you've gotten both already? Yep. Dan, you've gotten both. And Billy, you've gotten I've, both. I've gotten one. Oh, you've just gotten, gotten one. one. Okay. Dan, so Dan and I are in the one club and Billy yep. and Tanya are in the two club. Yep. I got my second last Wednesday. All right. So as a, after this Wednesday, Billy and I can hang out together without masks on. Ooh. Yeah. Yep. My, uh, my next one's April 17th. So I'll get my follow up then. And mine's so April then, 11th. So, so yes. then, and end of April, we can, uh, yeah, be- beginning of beginning of May. of May, the yeah. four of us can get back together. That'd be amazing. Oh, that's and cool. Then, and that's when we'll be able to do our, uh, cause we'll both, we'll, all four of us will have our two shots in. So yep. we'll be able to see if our superpowers develop. So we'll do the whole, you know, we'll, we'll do the random rolling. We'll generate the superhero characters for the, <laughs> <laughs> to see what magic powers we've gotten. <laughs> oh, I know what magic power I got. The ability um, to not stay on my feet. <laughs> yeah, the ability to bumble down the stairs. Yeah, I'll tell you, you know, bumble I mean, bounce. <laughs> I did not bounce, so I'm not a bumble. Uh, well, then, you know uh, the Legion of Superheroes, there's Bouncing Boy, he turns into a great big bouncy ball. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, it was more of like a thunk, 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 and sat at the bottom of the stairs, like dazed for a second, going, Did that really happen? I can't believe oh, that happened. I'm sorry. She texted me. She's like, well, I just fell down the stairs and all I could, you know, I'm sorry, but the first thing that popped in my head was the Eddie Murphy routine where he was talking about the ant falling down the stairs. Oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus, help me. Just all the way down, like every step along the way. And and so I might have chuckled. Well, I didn't giggle or chuckle, but I did smirk at one point. But then I got into like, oh, my God, are you all right? <laughs> but there was a moment where I was just like, boom, boom, boom. I'm like, oh, poor Tanya. Yeah. <laughs> and which is, you know, there's also, I have to say, it's nice to hear that somebody else is clumsy for a change of pace because usually it's me tripping over thin air. Well, it's funny because um, as a child, you know, like when you drop something, your first inclination is just to bend over and pick it up. Mm-hmm. Well, I dropped, I was uh, maybe three. Okay. And I dropped crayons at the top of the basement stairs in the house that um, we lived in, in Lakeville. And it was one of those modular homes where it was two homes put, it was like two sections brought oh, right. in, put together, put out a basement, yeah, that yeah. type, that type of thing. So the stairs were a wooden open backed stairs, no railing. And the door was open. My mom was on the phone with my aunt Joanne, who wasn't my aunt at the time, but it's my aunt now. And I had dropped a crayon and it wandered a couple steps down. So me being the, the just, oh, I'm going to pick it up type thing. Mm-hmm. I bend down to pick it up and proceed to um, roll down the stairs dun, 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 over the side mm-hmm. and hit the concrete and oh. cracked open the back of my head. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. So my mom's like, oh, my God. And she drops the phone. My Aunt Joanne's like. She drops the phone. They she comes running down because they she lived two houses up from my mom's house, and they put a towel on my head, bundling in the car, drive me to Strong from Lakeville. Didn't even think about maybe calling the ambulance because this is a head wound. No, nope. right. 
So my aunt is getting me to sing my ABCs, things like that, to make sure I, I stay awake, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. And um, she, I was chewing a piece of gum. So once I get in there, the, the I get called, I um, go into the little um, ED and they're getting ready to stitch my head closed, at least on the back. Cause, and so they have me spit out the gum. Well, unconsciously, I was so nervous and scared or whatever mm-hmm. that I started chewing my tongue. Oh, dear. So if anyone yeah, pays attention okay. to me when yep. I'm really focused on something or whatever, you'll see tongue. I chew on my tongue. They're like, are you chewing gum? I'm like, no. And I'm like, and so I'm like, eh, whatever. And that's something that developed that many years. So... I never noticed it until you and I would play Warcraft together and then we would like get Facebook video messenger going on so we could just like chat while we were um, while we were playing. And I'd look over every so often to see what, you know, where, if you were still at your chair or whatnot, because I wouldn't hear from you. And you'd be like, you, you could just see it. You're just like working away at them like, what, what are you doing? doing? <laughs> and, and, it, and it's and it's funny. So um, I get home, whatever. The next day, my grandpa, my mom's dad, who lived two houses down the other way. um came up and proceeded to put railings on with like um banisters and and things a banister with um slats and things like that so I wouldn't be able to fall through it. Mm-hmm. Well, fast forward to a couple months later or whatever, don't no, I do it again? again? Yep, okay. <laughs> yep. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. So that's why my uncle Steve has nicknamed me Grace. I see. <laughs> and then uh, a little, I don't know if it was the same year or whatever, that my Uncle John, Joanne's husband, was putting on their addition to their house. And he was doing the footers for the um, like fireplace wall and things like that. And I was over there wandering around, things like that. And don't I like get close to it and look in and then tumble into the footer and so i'm head first into the footer of the um uh addition and my uncle john has to lift me out by my ankles <laughs> yes <Yeah>. wow so <laughs> you're the I, original baby jessica in a well and, <laughs> and, yeah and and i'm taking adult tap and not ending on my face yeah okay that's good that's good so you, you, yeah, you so progressed i have progressed I was a cheerleader, promise. and I actually have pretty good dexterity, except for lately. Oh my god, it's been horrible. I'm gonna so. blame the vaccine. And and <laughs> Anne was like, "Oh my god, do I have to call one nine nine or one one nine? And because that's <laughs> we'll a joke see. between her and Jessica. Okay. And she, I'm like, no, I'm fine. She's like, do I have to take you to the ED? I'm like, no, I'm fine. She's like, is there anything broken? I'm like, mm, nope, I can move everything right now. Type thing. And then I proceeded to pick up the garbage bags that I slipped down the stairs and carry them out to Wade's truck and came back in and went right back upstairs. And she's like, no, no, sit down here. Chewy, go snuggle with her. She, <laughs> you're, you're not doing anything. So all because we were cleaning out her spare room so she can move her office upstairs. So the office moving starts tomorrow. And. Tanya's going over to help. So I was going to say you're going, you're going to help with that too. <laughs> I am helping with that too. And then does she have her insurance? Is your insurance pal paid up? I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm not sure. But she's like, oh my god. She called me later. She was like, do I have to take you? Do I have to like? I feel so bad. I'm like, really, Ann? She's like, I can't tell you how many times I've fallen down those stairs either. So and they're really steep. They're just really, really steep. It's an old farmhouse. The the rise is uh, the rise over the run. The, the the riser is okay. It's the run part. It's mm-hmm. the width of the tread that's a little narrower than what you would expect. Mm-hmm. So, mm. so that was my uh, energetic day yesterday. But on the positive note, I lost two pounds. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Did yeah. you lose it when you fell down the stairs? <laughs> so, yeah, they 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 tumbled off. Yeah. No, and I sent Chris a text later after I was home. I'm like, I'm shaky, and but I think a lot of it was because I was hungry. So, but. Yeah, when, when you I first was- bounced up after falling, I bet your adrenaline 
kept you from hurting. You might hurt more right. today. When I got hurt by, when I got hit by the car a couple of years ago, it took you know, a few hours before mm -hmm. my aches yeah. and pains really started setting in. I mean, fortunately, I'm going into spring break. So I don't have to work this week. So that's always a good thing. So, well, I am working at Ann's house. <laughs> That might that might be a bad thing. Can I just no. point out that because of this conversation, our demographics has definitely aged dramatically. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, the the, the kids are going to be like, oh, listen, oh. To the old people talk. <laughs> you know, we're done, that's, this is our old. conversation. This is our conversation. We're talking about our aches and pains and our clumsiness. Well, and and it kind of leads into our discussion for today: the bucket list, the things that we want to do. It sort of kind of does, yeah. yeah before we, we like stairs and kill ourselves, yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah. How, how, how I just right after elbow. we all go out and get our medications, so we can list <laughs> our medications on the show. There you go. I can do that. I'm I am yeah, currently. We I all am can. On, uh, Currently, I'm on 400 milligrams of fuck it all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, oh, man. But, yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. So that's good. So uh, hopefully yeah, no yeah. one yeah, else That's good, any... he says. <laughs> We're getting a litany of Tanya tumbling down the stairs and Dan goes, that's, that's good. good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what, else, what else we got going on in our lives? Well, here? Chris has some aches and pains working today. I'm not, he got no, I'm going to keep yesterday. laughing over that last observation just for a second longer. <laughs> Well, thanks yeah, to Tiny, I'm now chewing on my tongue. <laughs> I don't get the chewing your own tongue thing. I, I don't get that. Wouldn't that hurt? Well, she doesn't like chomp down on it. Like, she just it's like, more of like gnaw along the edge yeah. with my molars. Uh -huh. Yeah, but still, that would wouldn't that, wouldn't that hurt? I, I mean, I accidentally bite my tongue, and I'm in pain for like days afterwards. No, because I think th there's like a subconscious level that I know. How much there's pressure. a line she does not cross with her own teeth. I, I like kind of know how much pressure I'm putting on there, but yeah. it's usually when I'm really concentrating on something. Everything so. can be geeky if you love it enough. <laughs> Including chewing your own tongue. <laughs> Leave me alone! We love you, honey. I'm taking my ball and going home. Oh, wait, I'm already home. Just, I, I've, yeah, never, I I've, I've never heard of someone chewing their own tongue before. It's just... I just I think of it like the Charlie Brown effect when you when you see him, he's in that panel, he's really concentrating, and the tip of his tongue sticks out the side of his mouth. It's kind of the same thing, except you know? chewing it. <laughs> well, it's not like you see, you're, you're what you're doing is you're like chewing is in terms of like like gnawing, like just like, like oh. this is just this is just kind of like more of a reflexive. She's just you know kind of like just grinding lightly. I, I have a, a feeling that okay. maybe if we're playing D and D or whatever sometime, and if Chris happens to Look I over can look at across the, and I can get a, a picture of it. I will a picture or actually just a quick little video because a picture won't actually whatever. It'll zoom yeah, in. The thing me. Is, and then, as soon as I pick up my phone, you know I'm doing something. So you usually look across the table at me with that look like, don't even <laughs> dare. Don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dear. So, oh. but yeah, it, no, I mean, it doesn't hurt. So yeah, she's, okay. she's not. You know, she's not like trying to tear a chunk of it out. She's no, because my mom will go, Tanya. I'm like, what? She's like, you and your tongue. I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm concentrating. <laughs> but no, like my kids at work, they know and um how it ha why I do it mm -hmm. and how it happened. Because they're like, do you know you're chewing your tongue? I'm like, yep. I'm like, well, no, no I don't know what I'm doing there, but I know that it happens. And then yeah. I tell them the story. They're like, okay, never mind. So some people it's, bite their nails, you chew your tongue, you know. And exactly. I bite my nails, it's, too. It's, oh, it's like um, Lemony I, Snicket's it's a series of unfortunate events. They make a big deal of the fact that the, the female character, I can't remember her name, I think it's Violet, I don't remember. Um, when she's got an idea and she's thinking about something, she's in her, I'm going to solve a major problem mode, she puts her hair up at a ponytail. Right. So that's she's she's in her zone. That is her shift. She goes from her hair loose about her shoulders to she puts it up in a ponytail. Violet now goes to solve the, the whole problem. So when Tanya is working something, she's chewing on her tongue. When when Dan is working on something, he gets very quiet. His eyes narrow just a little bit. And you can tell he's just kind of focusing on something. When Chris is is focusing on something, he's, he's walking around like the, you know, the, the bubble thing in front of a, an insurance place. He's just going completely bonkers. It's like, oh, my God, I'm going to be over here. Be over here. You know, so it's there's, there's, a, there's, there's a cat going crazy. Is he there? Is that yeah. really? That's, that's, that's Potty in his room. He wants to get out, but wow. if he gets out, he fights with the other cats. <laughs> Let me go close the door to this room and hope it yeah, helps. I was like, like, wow. I was like, <laughs> something's going on there. Mm. 
So I had posted last night because everyone, a lot of people know my obsession with Baby Yoda. I posted roses are red, violets are blue. If you love Baby Yoda, you uh, may the force be with you. And um, so our friend Mark was over last night, and he go he finally notices my watch band that's got Baby Yoda on it, and then my Apple Watch face has a Baby Yoda. And I had my I'm all ears sweatshirt on yesterday. He go he looks at me. He goes. Do you have a, an issue with Baby Yoda? I'm like, <laughs> I go, yes. I love Baby Yoda. So I posted that, and he go, he just posted to my Facebook page, my Facebook. Page. I think an intervention needs to be scheduled. Um, <laughs> We've too tried. Late. We've People tried. Have it doesn't already work. tried. <laughs> right, Chris. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting thrown under the bus for that one. I can tell. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, uh huh. Yeah. And now we celebrate her love of baby. Yoda. Oh my god! Well, um, that's the way. Uh huh. Uh huh. Chrissy was like... over last night because Chrissy plays on that Saturday game with us, and um, she sees all my little baby Yoda figures, all the little twelve ones, like the size of the one that Billy got me with the frog that he's eating the frog. So I have them all like kind of in the nook on my desk and she's like oh look at all the cute little baby yodas do you have enough i'm like no there's six more coming out in july <laughs> and she laughed and i said i have two of these ones and i pointed to the frog one i said i have one here and i have one at work so i can enjoy that one at work and i'm like if i get another duplicate it'll go to work and i'll just start building up on my desk at work and the kids at work just <coughs> shake their head at me yeah and, as though they should yes yeah. So, and then I have four big baby Yodas to the side. Uh, then the Funko Pop. And I'm trying to look and see if there's anything else around here. No. My baby Yoda blanket that's down here. I have a baby Yoda blanket on my bed. My Build a Bear. Yeah. So, Close. we know what uh, Tanya's Halloween costume is going to be this year. I'm going to be Mando, and I am going to carry one of my baby Yodas. <laughs> That's badass, actually. That works. Cool. And I'm going to carry the one that does. Oh. Oh, oh those little noises. How cute. <laughs> Unless you want to bring my cat and dress him as baby Yoda. <laughs> and Dan, this isn't the one that you put push the head. This is a different one. This is, is a different one? one? Oh. This is the one you push the belly. Oh, jeez. Yep. So uh. this this one was from Squire. So Squire got me one. Um, uh, Sean got me one. I bought two of them. Chris got me one. Billy's gotten me one. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I got Dan one. Like I said, I'm pretty sure everybody's bought Tanya a Baby Yoda at one point or another. (laughs) Yep. My mom got me the watch band. Randy got me the blanket. Uh, my uh, coworker Pat got me a T-shirt from Target that says "I'm all ears." It's all green. Yeah. It's cute. Um, yeah, I think so. Anne's gotten me uh, a Baby Yoda um, makeup palette, and allegedly my makeup brushes with him sitting in the pram is coming. Oh, they boy. were shipped from Box Lunch. <laughs> Okay. Uh, you know what? Um, hint, hint, Lucasfilm. Hint, hint. There's a, there's a. a there's deep, an obvious sponsorship, yeah. yeah there, there's an obvi- uh, um, obvious uh, um, supporter and promoter of all the Baby Yoda type stuff. Yeah. So hint, we should tag Lucasfilm in this podcast, okay? There you go. Or Disney. <laughs> Disney. <laughs> Disney. Both. Both of them, yeah. They're like, can someone stage an intervention? We can't. <laughs> <laughs> If we can't stage an intervention, can you help her? Yes. Can we? Can we get more? <laughs> yes. Mention, you know, yeah. Mickey Always Mouse showing up in a Mandalorian outfit. No, Tanya, you have to really kind of cool off on this stuff. Maybe we get Tanya in the Gina Carano role. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Cara Dune. Ta- Tanya is the new Cara Dune. Dun, dun, dun. Um, That's a conversation uh, for a future. I, day, I, I am. Think. I don't have her build. I don't. I don't. Ha- I would have to do a lot of working out and. That like requires me moving, and you know when I moved yesterday, I fell down the stairs. So mm, I'm gonna sit right here in my chair and play World of Warcraft, but not right now. 
<laughs> but not right now. Because <laughs> then Dan will have to mute me. He's stinging from, the, from being admonished for, for <laughs> playing too much World of Warcraft in the I, I felt so bad that I even made him cookies. <laughs> I made him, made him lots of cookies. That was a lot of cookies. That was a lot of cookies. <laughs> you say it like it's a complaint. <laughs> Are you done with those cookies yet? There, there's a couple left. I know. I, I was going to say, so those. that was on Wednesday. So on Thursday, I made cookies that... Two weeks ago, I made. Was it two weeks ago? It was wild. Oh, almost, yeah. almost like a week and a half. Like two a week and a half. Yeah. Um. So Wednesday, I made your cookies when I went to Ann's for comic chicks, and then Thursday when I got home, I made the rest of the batch of cookies for gaming that night. We still have um some cookies left of that batch down here in the basement. Mm. So they were trying to finish them off last night, but. Sean said the gluten-free ones kind of tasted a little like, like, they, like they had a sandy texture to it. Mm-hmm. No, gluten-free are typically they because they had different flowers and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. So. yeah. <coughs> for my sister who's celiac, um, appreciated gl- the gluten-free ones. Oh, good. And she, she came over to visit. Like, Wait, <laughs> here I've got some Diana. gluten-free chocolate. Oh, that, was that was Debbie. Oh, that was Debbie. Oh, yeah, I didn't Debbie. know Debbie was in town. Yeah, she she comes in every couple months to help out my mom. So she stayed That's with great. stayed with me. We'll tell Debbie I said hi. And you're and, like, I've got gluten-free cookies. Yeah, she's like, oh. <laughs> and they disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad that I was able to make your sister happy. <laughs> yes, that was good, good timing for that. <laughs> nice. Okay. And we are, what, 20 minutes into our opening <laughs> and our into our intro. <laughs> yeah, well, it's kind of par for the course. You know, people know that, you know, about 20 minutes in, fast forward a little bit and you get to the interesting stuff. If, you know, if you don't want to talk about Tanya tumbling over and, you know, all of our aches and pains for being old middle-aged people, and, you know, we'll move on. It's all good. But we can take a quick break. And when we come back, it's bucket list time. The Bucket List. Dan and I were talking about it Friday night when we were doing our live of Dan and Chris Save the World. It is defined on Google as a number of experiences or achievements that a person hopes to have or accomplish during their lifetime. For instance, making this particular trip is on my bucket list. I had uh, several months ago on on Nerd World News, as as John Perengel reminded me, thankfully enough, and I appreciate that, John, um, that... I got into editorial mode on Nerd World News a while back and just trying to encourage people to do the thing. That's like my new battle cry. Go do the thing. Um, we've we've learned the hard way uh, this these past 12 months that life is fragile and the world is a chaotic place. And you may not have opportunities in the future that you would have right now. Um, so don't be afraid and don't let things get in your way. Um, get out and experience life, take those trips, go meet the people, go talk to people, go make and create things that you have always wanted to, you know, learn to cook, um, you know, be a woodworker, paint your house, you know, fix, fix things, do things. Uh, and, and, you know, we, we in this current version of society, um, we really are ruled by fears and anxieties. We really are. You know, so we get these these things. We, we're, oh, I'd, this is the ultimate thing I would love to do, but I'm not worth that effort, or I could never do that, or I'm afraid to do the thing. Um, I think we've learned in the past twelve months that, you know, oh god, I, I can't remember the quote. I think it's actually a Doctor Who quote, if I'm not mistaken. Um, courage is not the absence of fear; it's being afraid, but doing it anyway, because it's it's what you've always wanted, or it's the right thing to do, or whatever the case may be. So I am advocating that all of you all guys out there, guys and girls, and everybody in between, go do the things. Then when this pandemic is over, and it's starting to, I mean, it's not, the numbers are not great, but they're promising, right? We're we're going in the right direction. People are getting vaccinated. We, you know, we during the break, the four of us were talking about how far we are into vaccinations. Dan and I are halfway through. You know, Billy and Tanya are all the way through. They've gotten both doses. 
you know, we're talking about how we're going to be able to start seeing each other in person again soon, you know, and, and start doing the thing. So today to celebrate the mantra of go do the thing, we are going to formulate some of our own bucket lists. And, uh, and so I think we just go round robin and every just, you know, if, when it's your turn, just pick something and, uh, and, and we're going to have Tanya write it all down because she likes doing that sort of thing. And because I'm terrible at it and I'm going to forget what my own list is. Half the oh, time. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> that means I have to move. I hurt. <laughs> oh, I sorry. Well, you can type. You don't have to move. You can just, no, because you know. then Dan will have to mute me. Then we, then we could we could listen to the episode back and we can get it what it was. Okay, we'll just look at, you know, we'll, we'll go backwards and, and, and pick it up from there. All right, that's fine. Um, so I am going to pick a number from one to four. And Billy, you choose a number. Okay, uh, three. Three, okay. Dan? Uh, four. Okay. Tanya? Two. All right. The number was two, so Tanya goes first. Oh, so bitch. Come on. <laughs> my favorite number is two. You didn't think I was going to pick that one? Dan went Well, four. Billy took my favorite number of three. So when I was hoping that one would be, it means you go first. So therefore, I was going to go second. Children, so, children, <laughs> children. <laughs> that was my whole thing. Okay. Uh, my favorite well, number is 65. So if you want to. My seven. So, you know. It's a... <laughs> uh, um. Well, one thing I want to make sure that it's not going to be on my bucket list is any bungee jumping or skydiving. That, that, that'll leave all that to Dan. Dan has um, covered that ground for us. Well, you know, yes. I, think I, was making, I was making the image for the uh, for the, the episode, and, and I picked out an image that has bungee jumping and skydiving. I, I, I <laughs> sir, bungee jumping to me is like spiders are to you guys. Yeah. Oh, when I, yeah. Just looking at people do it freaks me out. I would not go bungee jumping again. I would go skydiving again. I would not go bungee jumping again. Bungee jumping just looks in, like insanity. Yeah. I, I don't like that. It's like the spring at the bottom, and I felt like I was getting thrown around like a rag doll, and I was well, sore they had you for in the weeks torso after. Harness. Didn't they? They had you in the torso harness. Yeah, the torso. So all their limbs yes. were free. Normally, in a bungee jump, it's around the ankles. Your ankles. So you're going mm -hmm. down. You know, I mean, Billy, you're going down head first, which is scary enough. Yeah. yeah. But it's it's more controlled. I've noticed where when somebody snaps, they're more folding themselves in half. So it's almost like doing a sit up. Yeah. Right. So you're not flailing all around. So I'm wondering if. You know, I'm here. I am hypothesizing over your daredevilness. You know, but uh, you know, regardless of that, um, Dan, you did it wrong. You got to do it again. I, yeah, I, don't, I, don't think I, I don't think I could have done it if I with my ankles. I don't think I could have done that. Yeah, um, that's but, fair. But I didn't. I I enjoyed the skydiving. I, I I did. I mean, it was it was. I remember the look on your face when they when they picked you up off the ground. Basically, as soon as you touched down. And, um, you know, they all came running out. All the attendants came out to run and help gather up the chute and get you unhooked from the harness and whatnot. Um, this, this, there was this look in your eye. You were, you were definitely, part of you had checked out. The rest of you was just absorbing what happened. There was a look in your eye. You were not processing being on the ground. You were still up in the air going, you know, just rolling. Let's do it again. Well, I, <laughs> you were doing I, I, the highlight I, reel in your head. I could tell. I, I want it to be longer. I mean, I mean, we did it from what, 10, 11,000 feet. And, yeah. you know, you get the, the first, you know, the first, part of it you're going free fall so you're going 120 miles per hour and it's just in the rush and then once the chute opens it's just like suddenly you know go from rushing air to just quiet uh -huh. and you're sitting there with just the chute and i'm like it was just oh it was just amazing just to be up there hanging up there well hey it's amazing the chute opens and you're just hanging up there you know <laughs> yeah. so there's there's that thrill of oh yes my chute actually opened because because I did it. I'm not gonna die. Well, because, well, there's two ways to do bungee jump. You can do tandem, which you're, ta you're, you're basically strapped to an instructor, someone who knows what they're doing, right. or you can do free fall, which basically you're doing it yourself. So no, I decided. Wait, I, mean, I don't remember. Were you tandem or free fall? I was free fall. We did. I, I did free fall. So um, you know. Huh. So what? Be, but because it's my first jump, I had two. I had two instructors. They're jumping. They jumped with me, and they basically held on to me. Yes, in the, in the free exactly. in the free fall part. So I wasn't right. strapped to them, but but and, but I was in I was in you know I was in command of what I was doing, and they're to, they're to make sure that I was doing what I needed to do right. And so that's kind of the thing when you're right. you're doing free fall. You you know, first you jump first couple jumps at least you jump with a couple of instructors, and then maybe jump with one, and then you're doing it your own. But they're, they're there to make sure that actually you know that I'm in the right position, so I'm not flapping all not flying all around that I pull the chute when I need to, you know, you're supposed to do all these checks to make, you know, check your altitude and pull the chute at the right time. And yeah. I was a, I was a hair late pulling, you know, pulling the cord for opening the chute because you're just like, wow, you know, just, you know, just the, the fact of it. But, um, 
Do you do that thing where you're floating around like you see on TV? Yeah, I mean, it almost looks like they're floating. Yeah, I mean that's that's what the the first part is, and and yeah. you, I went through eight hours of training before that. Yes. You know, so you get eight hours. So we, I did it in a different day because they went through the training and ended up being too windy to do it that day. But um, but you know, eight hours of training and the, and it's all about you know, of course, it's all about what go, what if something goes wrong. You know, there's, there's part of it. You know, this is how you fall correctly. This is how you, you you keep your thing. But you know, if the chute doesn't open or the chute opens and it's twisted, what do you do? And, and so that's a lot of the you know. So uh-huh. it's if if you can get through all that that putting the fear of God into you with you know your chute doesn't open type of thing, and then you still want to jump after that. I guess you're they they figure you're crazy enough to do it. But um, <laughs> also but yeah. the instructors, like you said, they were right there with you, and I think that's why mm-hmm. I was confused and I couldn't remember if you were tandem or free fall. Yeah, because they were right virtually on top of you the for most of the free fall they, they were holding on to holding on to the side of my, my my um my my suit there so yeah i think one of them even had like a, his hand on the, the 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 pull lever for a moment there like he goes if this guy can't pull it i'm going to yank it for him well, they're, well they're they're close enough so they can if some you know if you don't right. for some reason so yeah now as soon as they got dan all situated and they were pulling him from the harness and whatnot and he's just like you can see the look in his eyes just like oh my god oh my god and i'm like you're all right because that was that was amazing, and he's just talking about it. And then one of the instructors looks at me and goes, "Well, how about you? How about you, brother? Is it your turn?" I'm like, "No, no, <laughs> no." Uh, so I, I would do it again, just because. I mean, it was. I mean, a to just jump out of a moving, you know, a perfectly good airplane was just kind of crazy. But it was. Just, uh-huh. It's just the, the the rush of it was, and it wasn't. It was. Yeah, it was. It was cool. It was, I enjoyed it. So is it kind of like Cap when he jumps out of the back of the Quinjet? Yeah. <laughs> Also, Cap does it without the virtue of having a parachute. Yeah, parachute, yes. yeah. yeah so does Bucky. Yeah, I noticed Bucky doing that, but that's spoiler. We're not going to talk too much about that. Because <laughs> um, Bucky's landing is a little less... Uh, uh, graceful? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. So. Um, I think, so, after hearing that, I think okay. I don't mind being up in the air, but it's going to be in a plane headed to Ireland. Okay. There you go. So I, I'm like, I've been to England and things like that, but I was 16, so I didn't necessarily appreciate it as much. So um, I'd love to go see Ireland and England again, as that's part of my um, ancestry, things like that. That's mm-hmm. where my heritage is. And Start finding out who you are. Mm-hmm. I'm Well, I'm um, Irish and Scottish, primarily. So mm-hmm. therefore, I like potatoes and I like bread. So win-win. <laughs> um <laughs> The only thing is, I don't like whiskey and I don't like beer. So That's all right. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I no. like the potatoes. So I think definitely I would like to probably try to get a trip overseas to Ireland and Great Britain again. That sounds like it would be awesome. Cool. All right. So after the long conversation of... Um, Bungee jumping. Of bungee jumping and whatnot, Dan. How about you? What's your what's your, what's your first pick for your list? I mean, I, I want to go to England. I, that's that's been a long time thing. So I mean, I'll, I'll be you know road partly. Trip. Yeah, I mean road trip to England, road trip to the the, the island over there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've always I've, I wanted to. See, I mean, just a it's a it's a great place to visit in a foreign country where I can mostly speak the the language. You know, <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, it's um, you that's know, so an excellent I, point. You know, so that that's a big plus. Plus, like the history of England, seeing the castles, seeing just I mean, all the stuff about England, and uh, you know, I I love seeing the old castles, and I've been seeing uh, and I know other countries do too, but I just, um, yeah, England, England's one of the the top ones that I want to place I want to see. So, one of the reasons you love Doctor Who, besides it's a great show. <laughs> um, I don't know, just the, the British comedy. I mean, it's it's yeah, I, I get it. So. Monty Python. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, now. I watched the documentary like yesterday, like. too, Don. <laughs> Good for you. I fell down the stairs yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Billy had more fun. I, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> That's funny. Oh. Okay. How about you, Bill? Uh, it's funny. Mine is based on a book I read in the late 80s. And, you know, I'm a huge baseball fan. And there's a, a book called Dodger Dogs to Fenway Franks, the ultimate guide to America's top baseball parks. Oh, wow. And the author went to every major league park and rated each park mm-hmm. on like seven or eight different categories. But along the way, his, his book also covers his trip, the, his summer going to all the ballparks, mm-hmm. how he got 
robbed in California, how he was trying to beat the uh, impending baseball strike and wow. like all the adventures he had in all the cities along the way. So I'd love to go to all the Major League Baseball parks. That'd be cool. Because that book has fascinated me since it came out in like 88 or 89. So It's a documentary in book form. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right up your alley, Billy. It really is, not to mention it. I wonder if there's a movie version of it. I'm but sure yeah. there's something out there. I, I, I'd like to go to all the Major League Baseball parks. That's um, really cool. Yeah. That would be very cool. Yeah. And watch games. I've been to, I'm trying to think now how many I've been to. Mm-hmm. I've been to Toronto's Exhibition Stadium, the old one, Toronto Sky Dome, which is called the Rogers Center now. Uh, Pittsburgh's. Um, oh, is that what happened to it? I wonder because I don't hear anybody talking about Sky Dome anymore. So I was wondering. Yeah, it's called the Rogers Center okay. now. Rogers Center. Okay. Uh, let's see. I've been to Pittsburgh, been to uh, Cleveland, and City Field in New York. So five of them, maybe six. Hmm. All right. Well, I'm on my way. But okay. I want to do it all in one like trip. One big trip. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Let's see. So we're talking about baseball stadiums that you've been to. I've been to Toronto. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, when I went to New York, uh, when I went to see the Yankees, it was eighties. So I don't know which stadium that is. The the original Yankee stadium. Okay. So I've been there. I've been, I believe to a stadium in Tampa. Okay. Um, Tropicana field. I think it it maybe may have been. Yeah. Cause we, we saw, um, uh, preseason for the Yankees, but then we were also over there. I think we were at a soccer field because we saw Wolfman Jack. <laughs> so. Oh, so you were at one of the uh, training sites. That's yeah. even cooler. I'd like, I Susan, I've been talking about wanting to go to uh, a spring training trip to Florida. And hmm. when we were in Florida in 2019, when we went to um, Raymond James Stadium to see um, the Bucks play the, I think the Saints, um, mm-hmm. right next door is the Yankee Training Stadium. Because nice. I sent so I because I sent pictures to Chris just to rub it in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> we have the friendly rivalry because I'm a Red Sox fan and she's a Yankees fan. You know. Most of my family is actually Yankees fans, so it's every so often when I show up wearing a Boston T-shirt or a Boston baseball hat, they all just stare for a little bit. Who are you? <laughs> yeah, my my uncle actually asked my mom, "How did this happen?" You know, because my mom's side of the family are all diehard Yankees fans. My mom's a diehard Yankees fans. I grew up watching the Yankees on WPIX Channel Eleven out of New York, right? Phil Rizzuto, you know the NBA. holy cow, holy cow, and uh, and my dad was a Mets fan. So you had Mets and Yankees in the house, and here's a Red Sox fan. But, you know, I've told that story. I blame them. It's their fault. So They took you to a Red Sox fan. My, my first Major League Baseball game was at Fenway, and that's all you need to know. So <laughs> <laughs> it was all downhill from there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So, okay, so we're all we're all making trips so far, it sounds like. Dan and, and Tanya want to go to, uh, to England, Scotland, Ireland, that neck of the woods. Billy is looking forward to... Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, to uh, traveling uh, to all the baseball parks. I would find myself, uh, you know, I, I did talk about a little bit Friday night. My my first trip that I would want to do is a is one lap around the country. Just load everything into the SUV, bring Juno, bring Ian, and just start driving and hit one lap around. Just, you know, leave New York, go west along the United States. It'd be easy to cut through Canada, but I wouldn't want to do that. I would miss, miss the point. Go west until I hit Seattle turn south, keep going south until I'm almost out of California, and then turn east and keep going until I hit Georgia and keep going, and then north and so forth. You know, so mm-hmm. just one lap around, I think it'd be great. And then along the way, um, you know, finding all sorts of cool side things to, to, you know, like when I'm close to Arizona, head north and go to the Grand Canyon, you know, or New Mexico, you can see Grand Canyon, you know, or, you know, stopping, uh, going on a big divert and popping up to Missouri so I can visit my, uh, my friends in Kansas city, things like that. So it's, and, and having a list of people I would want to visit. I have a ton of friends that have been internet friends, people that I've known forever. We know each other's lives. We know each other's kids and names and pets and what their jobs, their ups, their downs, trials and tribulation. I've never met them face to face. 
there is a swath of at least 12 people I can think of that I would consider very dear friends that I have never been physically in their presence. So I'd fix that. Yeah. So that's, my, that's my first trip. Well, when you go through California, stop in San Francisco and bring me back some 49ers stuff. I can do that. Okay. Absolutely. I don't have a problem with that. I say that's part of part of the fact that I don't actually have a favorite football team, you know. <laughs> so, of all that, the that, times that, I've been to San Francisco, I just guess I should have brought you some stuff. Huh? <laughs> okay. Although, you I know think what, you were even... in San Francisco pretty much previously before we knew <clears throat> each other that well. Who's who's the like the arch nemesis team of the 49ers? They like do they have like a the Seahawks. Rival? The Seahawks. Really? See, even if I was a Seahawks, or the, or fan, the Cardinals. I, I still even oh because of divisional rivalry. Yeah, I, I'd yeah. still buy Tanya 49er stuff because I know that somewhere. Bring me another Seahawk. So <laughs> it's just the baby meme all done up in like their first birthday cake, and it's all blue. Oh yeah, I've seen that one. Yeah, bring it, me another Smurf. Bring me another Smurf, and then I've seen it as bring me another Seahawk. So. Uh huh. Because blue is so. their primarily color, primary color, blue and green. Gotcha, so. gotcha. Yeah. yeah, Sybil's a big Seahawks fan. I know she's talked about that on a regular I basis. still love her. She's a doll. We love our Sybil. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, so yes, I, the trips. A lot of trips I'm mm-hmm. hearing. That's cool. The, um, I actually have a question for you guys, and based on that, what's the best trip you've ever taken? What's your favorite like vacation you've had so far? Oh. I can answer that one. Yep. Go ahead. You guys first. Um well definitely uh spending time with my, my parents in in any of the vacations were awesome. But I wanna say when in nineteen eighty nine when we went to Hawaii for seventeen days. Ooh, uh, that's a long yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> um uh it it was um, April 1979. My parents had been or 1989. My parents had been married for 10 years, so it was their 10 year anniversary. And we went for vacation, and um, we stayed in Waikiki in the Hilton Hawaiian Village in the Rainbow Towers mm-hmm. um, uh, Hotel. It's the one that looks out over the lagoon and things like that, and Diamond Head, and going to Luau's and meeting Don Ho and. Ooh, rent- wow renting a jeep and driving around the island and me in the back seat wearing a bathing suit top and it really really hurt <laughs> hitting all the bumps coming around um coming back around going to the dole plant um doing all that stuff but just and it's funny because every day it rains for about 15 minutes or so around two o'clock in the afternoon and it's like clockwork but then the rest of the time, the weather is beautiful. Kind of like we Florida went, in July there, wasn't it? Good. Remember, remember Chris at <laughs> Disney? Oh, God, yeah. Oh, I've been to Disney the, in July at, also. At 3 o'clock, it was rain time. Yeah. You know? Trying to do a sea, of, a sea of yellow. <laughs> yes. Hey, you in the yellow. <laughs> you know, the ponchos. Yeah. And, and the Disney um, ponchos. Going to Pearl Harbor and going mm-hmm. out to um, the... Uh, U.S. Arizona. Yes, Arizona Memorial. Pearl like Harbor that. was an experience. I, that's that's yeah, everyone, everyone so. should, should should do that. So and and that was that was interesting. And um, us coming, I don't know. I think I don't know if that when we're coming back when we hit Chicago, that um, our flight from Chicago to Rochester had been canceled. Oh, no. So no. we sat in the O'Hare airport for like eight plus hours uh, waiting to um, get a flight back because um, there wasn't just enough people to fly that flight. So they just canceled it at wow. that specific time. So we were waiting, waiting, waiting. Uh, and who do must- we meet? But Jim Beheim of the Syracuse Orange <laughs> in the airport. Oh, so, wow. It, it was just so weird. I don't know if it was the Hawaii trip or us coming back from Colorado, but it, one of those two trips, our flight had been like was now non-existent, and we had to sit <laughs> in the airport for like ever. Oh so, boy! I think so. That's like one of the most memorable ones. <clears throat> I've, like I've been to the Bahamas. I've been to Florida like twenty gazillion times. So, and then of course I've been to Europe. But. Yeah, I've been to Italy a couple of times. How about you, Dan? Memorable my most trip. memorable trip was probably the my, the Mediterranean cruise I went on. We started in Turkey, um, went to a whole bunch of the Greek islands, and ended up in e- in Egypt, and ended up in Athens. Wow. So um, oh, it was I, I saw 
I, I I like the cruise because you get uh, you get the same you know same bed every night and you get to see a lot of different places. Um, uh-huh. I don't like it because you don't get to spend enough time in places. But okay. it's a nice it's nice for an overview. So if you're not sure if you want what to see a lot, of, yeah, if you're not sure what you want to do, if you want to see a lot of things in a relatively short period of time. Um, I, I recommend cruises, but if you really want to get into the the places and really experience the places, you're not going to have the time. Um, but I mean, I saw, I mean, I saw the Egyptian pyramids finally, I saw, you know, the big, the big pyramids I saw, um, you know, the, uh, I, I don't know so much, so much stuff, you know, it's you know, Turkey, um, saw the, the, the big, um, the, I can't, I can't remember the names of stuff right now, but so many like, old ruins and this and that other stuff. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it, I saw a lot of stuff and it was definitely well worth it. And, um, I, I wish I could have spent more time in some places, but it, it just, a good overview of everything. It's just pretty amazing. Well, the question is now, after <coughs> after this COVID nineteen, would you go on a cruise again? I would. That's cool. I know a lot of people. You know, cruise ships have always had kind of a reputation for being big honking petri dishes to begin mm-hmm. with. You always hear yep. about you know virus outbreaks on on cruise ships to begin with. And I have a cousin whose whose daughter. Um, worked on cruise ships. She was a, an assistant cruise director for a, a long time. And, uh, you know, she had success. She had a great time and, and uh, a lot of great life experience at it. Um, but, but, um, <coughs> excuse me, but, uh, in the overall, you always hear the, the horror stories and I, I wonder how they, they play out in people's minds in terms of what they would or would not do. Yeah, I mean, it's such a big industry still. I mean, it's, I mean, it was. I mean, it's huge before. I mean, before the of course before COVID, and it's gonna it shrunk down a lot because I know a lot of cruise ships. Have re- they've retired a lot of cruise ships since then. A lot of them have been sent. To, a lot of the older ships have been sent to the scrapyards instead of trying to prolong their lives and everything. And I'm 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 kind of you know amazed by these giant you know ships that they build that you know can, just massive. You know, it's just in. Yeah, I mean, I've had stuff like, like you know, the the giant ships, like air, aircraft carriers, the giant cruise ships. The, these things just, it's just amazing. That we build these things that float, and there's so many people living on these these things, and mm-hmm. um, and and how they're run. Like these crew, you know, these ships, and how they're run. I mean, these cruise ships, and the fact that they generate all their own clean water and this and that, and do this and all this, you know, the mm-hmm. the be able to to run to be able, you know, thousands of people turning over, you know, week after week, they're turning these people over like in hours. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's just the all the stuff behind running these things. It's pretty pretty amazing. So and but um, but yeah, I, I would ride. I'd do another cruise. I, I I'd have no problem with it. You know, it's. Plus, there's theme cruises for almost anything you enjoy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There was uh, yeah. there's a ton of music cruises. So it's like yep. an you know, 80s cruise. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of 80s cruises, yep. Very Naked Ladies did a cruise a bunch of years Star with Trek. a bunch of their music fans or music uh, friends. And uh, there was a Comic-Con cruise a couple years ago mm-hmm. yep. that had like a lot of the Best creators and celebrity, like a uh, Comic Con, but on a big old I was boat. Say there That's... was a Star Trek cruise. I yeah. thought in twenty twenty two. In twenty twenty two, the Star Trek cruise. Oh really? Um, Star Trek: The Cruise Official Year Five Mission. Mariner of the Seas is fully transformed into the ultimate Star Trek amusement park at sea. Seven day cruise of stars of Star Trek. I hate I hate to the site because my computer blocked my. But February twenty sixth to March fifth, twenty twenty two. Okay, hold on. Let me get to it. I'm using my, my work computer and they block a lot of stuff. And apparently oh, the Star Trek no. cruise is, is questionable. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you said cruise five? Yep. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cabin pricing. Oh, let's see. Uh, they're all wait listed. It's <laughs> sold out. Wow. Well, there was a, a bunch of people on there. So there's a bunch of good names on that were uh, scheduled to be on it. So yeah. Yeah. Okay, past guest price, new guest price of Royal Suite of Balcony, $8,500. Yeah. Uh, per person, da da da. Uh, the cheapest one is twenty one fifty. That's for an interior. Yeah. A seven day cruise with the and you're with the celebrities and stuff. So yeah, but but yeah, there's um, a lot. There's a lot of theme cruises out there. George yeah. Takei, Walter Koenig, Jonathan Frakes, Marina Gates, Denise Crosby, 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 uh, Crosby <laughs> John Delancey, Terry Farrell. 
uh, Alexander Siddig, uh, Chase Masterson, Nana Visitor. Yeah, I mean, this is a, it's a it's a great list. I mean, it's a great cast a great list there. List. Yeah, that's huge. That's a lot of really big names. Mm-hmm. More to be announced soon. Because why not? Yeah. Ah, uh, uh, Trip, Connor Trenier. Oh yeah, from Enterprise. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I I mean yeah I mean it's it, it'd definitely be a quite a uh uh yeah quite the thing yes. Anyways, okay. Yeah. Trips. <laughs> Uh-huh. All right. So our favorite trip, um, my favorite trip of all time, it's going to be a toss up. Um, oh, this is, dif- that's actually difficult. Now, the more I think about it, um, when I was a senior in high school, I got the opportunity to go on the school sponsored trip to Italy. Uh, and so we were there for a little over a week during, I believe it was February break. And, uh, and, and it was great because I had already been there when I was 13 with my family. So I had this, <laughs> weird luxury of being able to um, be the veteran because there was a lot of people who had never been there before. And so I kind of, you know, I was almost like a, an unofficial associate guide. It was really a lot <laughs> of fun. And uh, I remember finding this little hole in the wall family restaurant in Rome that my family had been to four years earlier. And my grandfather had hit it off because they were all Luigi's. My my grandfather's name was Louis. And so he introduced himself. Oh, Lou, Luigi then. And we're all Italian. Oh, great. And they had such a blast. And my grandfather, you know, if you'd ever met him, you knew that he was the kind of guy who would, he would be your best friend within fairly quick order, right? It was just a thing that he was good at doing. Um, So I, I found the place. With my dad's help, he kind of gave me, an, and we didn't have GPS and internet back in the day, so I really just had to rely on city maps and whatnot. Um, and I got there and didn't, after telling them a little bit about who we were, one of the guys remembered our family. Didn't remember me in particular, but remembered the family. And so here we are, six or seven high school kids treat, being treated like freaking kings. We ate like, oh, everything. And, and it ended up being like 50, 60 bucks in American money. And, and so, yeah, that was, that was just great awesome. moment. Um, tossing up with that, if that could actually be equal, that whole experience would be um, my, my, my last trip solo out to San Francisco. I went to go visit a friend of mine and uh, that was just after we did, the, I think it was like a year after we did the Disney trip. Okay. So it was 97, 98 ish. 98 would have been, yeah. Yeah. And I just remember going and I met my friend and we were all hanging out for a little while and then they took off and, and I was on my own in, in San Francisco for like three or four days, just wandering around, taking in the sights, you know, going to the pier, you know, checking out the aquariums, just having a grand old freaking time. And it was just a freaking blast. I just, I loved that one. That was a lot of fun. I've enjoyed San Francisco because I've I've been there many times for work. So it's been Mm -hmm. nice. And I've, I've, there's been times I've had a lot of free time so I can, I've seen a lot of different places. So, yeah. Yeah. How about you, Billy? What was your favorite? That's I was like you. I've, I've got to narrow it down because when you said Disney, that reminded me that when I worked at CMF with Wheeze, we broadcast from Disney for a week. Oh, you did? So it was a Disney trip for free. Ooh. I got paid to go to Disney. It was my wow. job Even to go better. to Disney. <laughs> that so is they, outstanding. We broadcast from 6 to 11 every day. Uh, we got picked up in the morning, brought to the studios in uh, um, MGM Park, where awesome. we did our ra- radio show. Then after that, go wherever you want, do whatever you want. Rid, rode all the rides. We had meal passes. We had, you no, know, uh, we, we stayed in uh, Disney Village. It, everything was free. You can't beat free Disney. No, definitely God. not. No. And not not only free, but like I said, I got my paycheck for doing it. <laughs> that is amazing. So that that has to be <laughs> maybe that, one that of the best. Be pretty ever. amazing. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But I, I guess once I paid for the one, the first ones that came to my my mind was the first time I went to Fan Expo in Toronto. It's the mm. third biggest Comic Con in the world, mm. you know, after San Diego and New York. Right. So Susan says she can still remember my face, just like looking at it and wonder, you know, like I'd found my tribe, and I <laughs> I, I had a ball that time. But honestly, the best trip was the one a few years ago. To New York, where saw Springsteen on Broadway, mm-hmm. went to see the Mets and Yankees play 
uh, a game at City Field. Uh, saw the Carol King uh, Broadway musical, uh, Beautiful, with Melissa Benoist playing Carol King. Oh, wonderful. Um, went to the Stephen Colbert show and uh, went to New Jersey for a, a book signing where uh, former Mets first baseman Keith Hernandez was prom- was uh, doing a thing. Oh, wow. And so, That's quite the trip there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was like a Wednesday through a Sunday, did wow. all that. The, the last a- thing was the Mets game on the Saturday night, and then we came home Sunday Sunday morning. That's quite a lot in just a few days. <laughs> so that, that and pray that and Disney, <laughs> like yeah. free Disney, which for, no, we were in Disney for a week, which was mm-hmm. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Season. I've had a lot of good trips to New York. I mean, New York is just there's so yeah. much you can do there. I've, I went down there one time. It was just after 9-11. I was like a couple months after that. And uh-huh. I was down there for um, almost a week by myself. And I was just, it was, uh, yeah, I, I always enjoyed my trips to New York. Mm-hmm. So basically, I think what we can take away from, from most of this conversation, and we're going to throw a couple of rapid fire um bucket list items along the way after this but going places and seeing things is is a big predominant plan experiences Uh, yes yes experiences that's it i mean you can buy stuff all day long easy right i can (laughs) <laughs> it's been I proven it's been yes. proven yes and this is the episode we did a few weeks ago right <laughs> um but it's a matter of going out and doing the things and seeing the world and exploring it and and being a part of it i think that is just a huge facet of of what we want to do as people going forward and with i think that's just a fantastic idea really mm-hmm. you know go go and do the things so let's see. So we we've, we've talked about trips. Um, Tanya, yes. Give me give me a bucket list thing. Um, bucket list thing. I would love to meet Jeremy Renner. Okay. I, 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 we have that possibility to do it whenever we get the budget. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Right, that's a thing. Hint, hint, sponsor, sponsor, Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> We're a nonprofit organization. <laughs> She's not wrong. <laughs> yeah, I mean, do, does that mean do we have bucket list people we want to meet? Yeah, yeah, we do. How about you, Dan? I mean, I know you've met Debbie Gibson on several occasions. Is there anybody yeah. you have not met yet that you'd love to? I, I mean, there, there's a bunch. I mean, I, I'd love to. I'd love to meet Billy Crystal. He's always been, yeah. I've always been a fan of his. Mm-hmm. Um, no Patrick Harris. I, I met him briefly after, after Cab- he was in Cabaret and I met him briefly at, you know, at the stage door after that, but I've heard, you know, right. heard that he's a nice, and there's a whole bunch of people that are just, they just seem like they're, they'd be very interesting guys to or pe- people to, to sit down and talk with. And I can't think of all the names offhand, but Billy mm-hmm. Crystal's always been near the top of my list of someone I want to meet. Okay. Uh, and just, and not in just like actually, Top, be able to talk with type of thing. Um, but there's, yeah, there's a whole bunch of other people I have to think about it. But all right, so Jeremy Renner for Tanya, Billy Crystal for Dan. How about you, Billy? It's, it's funny going back to the vacation. I, I had so many good vacations, I forgot about the time I went to New Jersey for Kevin Smith Vulgarthon. Oh, yeah, there you go. And yeah. met everyone in the Kevin Smith universe, basically, including all got my Facebook photo is the picture I took with Kevin. Nice. So that's true. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Since I, I got to meet and chat with him, I'm going to go Springsteen. That's okay. obvious, but Bruce Springsteen. Yeah, okay. that, that works. Yeah. For me, it'd be uh, Peter Capaldi. Okay. Who is who has with with tremendous tremendous aplomb has become my favorite doctor of all time. But also, he's just a, a capital actor and human being. And I think my favorite Peter Capaldi anecdote was um was by uh uh jenna jenna louise coleman right and mm-hmm. they were filming and peter had wandered off because he does that between scenes he just wanders off and so where's peter where's peter where's peter and he shows up uh and and he's just drenched 
he's just soaked from head to toe and wardrobe is going bonkers because now he's just soaked. They're trying to figure out, you know, okay, got to pull out another costume in or you got to figure out how to dry him off. You know, there's going to be a delayed shooting, whatever. And what happened? Well, he was, they were in the subway areas, the underground areas where they were filming the one where the tarts starts shrinking mm-hmm. and, um, and had the two dimensional, um, the two dimensional villains. And, uh, he had wandered off and, uh, and it found a little, like, kind of like almost a work, like holdover area like a like a rest stop for workers and whatnot and he's just exploring and he sees this big red button on the wall and he's like oh big red button presses it <laughs> curiosity and it turned out to be a shower oh <laughs> and in that moment he proved that peter capaldi really is the doctor <laughs> just <laughs> there's just no if answer buts about it because so, um, that's a very doctor thing to do oh look mm-hmm. button press <laughs> you know? And, and just, but I've seen him in so many other things over the years. And I just, and I see him in interviews with people, you know, reaching out and touching the fans and working with fans and, and how he just relates as a fan himself to materials. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this is a guy I just, I want to meet this guy, you know? Yeah. So. Those are the kind of people you want to meet. The ones who, who can appreciate it like that and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that'd be that. All right. So places to go, people to meet, bucket list Let's be materialistic for a minute. Bucket list item that you would want to buy that isn't involving Baby Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think Tiny should get the real Baby Yoda puppet. That would be amazing. An actual prop. An actual, yeah, screen <laughs> used. Puppet. Puppet. Yeah. That would be a. That would be an actual. I, I could see that. That would be cool. That would be like a Holy Girl kind of an item for her. That would be funny. Oh, just to see her reaction to that's a tough question it is a very very tough question because like material thing i don't think there's really anything out there that well don't think of it as something you might need just something or, that or so, would mean yeah. something to you if you had it yeah <sighs> okay. i mean and that's the thing is we have a very materialistic society and to the point where we are taught not to be materialistic so we feel bad about wanting items at times you know but just you know we're having fun right now think about something that you would like to put in the inventory a geek item you know or or a tech thing something that you would love to add to your house you know so i'll go first for me i'd love to uh, to really just make my house a full-on smart house put solar panels on the roof and take it off the grid i think that'd be amazing just to be like take this little this little niche of the of this of the city and turn it into, you know, Jarvis, really, basically, let's be honest. So <laughs> I was going to say, could, could I get a house that cleans itself and uh, all that mm-hmm. all that kind of fun stuff? In theory, I think that's actually possible. At least to some extent, yeah. Well, the robot you know, vacuums the and, and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, That could be a thing. My first thought when when you said that was, like, my Holy Grail comic book. Not okay. the one, like action, action number one or detective 27, you can sell for a million dollars. One that like I'd want to keep and like the CGC plastic and mm-hmm. just to have, even though it's or something is my favorite comic book growing up was Superboy and the Legion of Superheroes. That's okay. how I knew about Bouncing Boy earlier when, <laughs> when uh, we we're talking about Tanya falling down the stairs. Right. Uh, I love the Legion of Superheroes, and their first appearance was in Adventure Comics number 247. So I'd like a copy of Adventure Comics 247. I've that, read the story. It's been repeated a million times, but to have a copy of the actual comic book. I like that. Would, I like would, that a lot. That's um, awesome. That is definitely very cool. All right. So we got comic book and tech how about you daniel son have we inspired an idea i mean i i would like like some of those like it's like some rare like original old like disney stuff or old original like star wars stuff or something that's you know that's just something that that that's not not the the mass produced stuff of today necessarily but stuff that's like the one um, of a kind type things. More of that, like you know, even like um, and I have a couple of these things, but like like things that they used they used in the parks, even and they they, they retired them, and you know, I I do actually have a couple of, of small things like that where they you know they used like in the parks or the hotels or stuff that's 
unique to Disney that is, it isn't mass produced for sale, but it's more of a um, something that was just produced for limited because it just, that, you know, or, you know, even going a little bit bigger and getting, you know, some retired, you know, ride car par parts or something like that. Because I've seen like sometimes like the car, you know, the some of the things from the rides, they go on sale and stuff like that, or, or you know, and the auctions, whatever, auction sites and stuff, but just something original, something that's, you know, not, that, that's, you know, like when my, my dad would go garage sale. Like I said, you know, I, I told him at one point, if you find anything Disney, get it for me. He'd come back with, cause there's so much mash produce and, and, and he'd come back with like everything, like all this stuff like that's, you know, not what like it's, the, the Disney junk type of stuff, which is so mass produced, is not really doesn't mean anything. So I had to clarify something that's old and, and worth something, and you know something that's that's you know not a common thing, but something that's right. you know that that stands out by itself. That this is a unique piece of the Disney history or something that you know there, there's only you know a few of them in the world type of thing, or it's you know this was this was used at the the main gate at Disney World, the sign hung at the you know the the gate there type of thing. Okay. You know, something that's Something like that, something that doesn't necessarily have it's there's value, but it's more of you know, I, I love Disney World and I'd love to own a piece of it type of thing, you know, kind of thing. This is this was users people people looked at this when they were walking into the happiest place on earth type of thing, and this was part of what made that experience type of thing. Got it. So something right. like that, you know. Yeah. Little... <laughs> yeah, that's cool. No, I like that. That's a that's a good one. Um all right, and so that's okay. Disney, and who, who I've missed? I know I've missed somebody. You got you. You're the smart now. What's that? The smart house for me. Mm -hmm. Billy wanted um, comic book. You want Disney? Tony, did we get an answer on that one for you? Because I know you just kind of like rifled off the whole cleaning the house thing. But yeah, um, nothing really comes to mind. Okay. Uh, unless unless I could actually get like real life TARDIS that works. <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> well, if that's on the table, then we have a longer discussion to have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's not on the table. Okay. Um, Sorry, honey. No, I, I would say probably just like a more wide open like house layout type thing. So I, I have like the gaming area and I have, I, I, you know what? I think I'd like a gaming area that was not in the basement where my toes wouldn't be so cold. <laughs> that's fair. It's so, bad. but moving, uh, talk about moving my office area upstairs. It's just too many things to move and clean, and I might fall down two slides of stairs. So that's not happening. <laughs> um, yes, we can't have that. And and there's still kind of like a sound insulation with me being down here because if I went upstairs, then yeah, no, not happening. So yeah, really, really not much mm -hmm. that I can think of. I guess okay. I have a tendency that I want to give stuff to other people. Yes, and you do. not necessarily give stuff to myself. So I think that's probably the hardest thing is thinking about something for myself. And then Chris and my mom and other people will tell you then it's really hard to buy for my birthday. It is almost <laughs> impossible sometimes to buy for your birthday because you're like I already got it. Oh, yeah, I got oh, it. Yeah. Okay, damn it. All right, fine. <laughs> Oops. Like, oh, really? For, for Tanya, I found an article, the Baby Yoda screen use puppet. If I'm reading this right, uh, cost or can be sold, or where is it? Uh, the uh, Hero Yoda, blah, blah, blah. oh, maybe the real Yoda, $5 million. Okay. Not Baby Yoda. It is, I think let's, it's let's, the real Yoda. Let's Five get it. million. Yeah, let's do that. Well, there is on um, oh, on Amazon. I see it right now. Sideshow Star Wars: The Mandalorian, the child life size figure is four hundred and eighty three dollars. So, cost oh, was it the Nerdist? Yeah. Oh, cost five million to make. Wow. That's the Baby Yoda puppet. Cost them five million dollars to oh, make. Oh, okay. It. So probably not buying it the, this week, huh? No, mm -hmm. most likely not. <laughs> I remember the first because Pal, uh, there was an article in regards to Adam Pally who played a bike scout trooper in episode 8 mentioned uh, the, I remember the first take that I did and when I punched the baby Yoda puppet they called Cut and John um, was it Favreau mm -hmm. uh, who was watching from the monitor office came down from the office and he goes I just wanted to let you know that this is the hero Yoda and it costs like 5 million 
Um, so, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Whoops. Mm-hmm. Called the Hero Baby Yoda Puppet a phenomenal technological achievement. It requires two technicians to operate, one for the eyes and mouth and the other for the facial expressions. Uh, so, yeah. He's so cute. I need him. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Billy. Uh-huh. I don't want the $5 million price tag, though. Yeah. No. <sighs> yeah. Oh, yeah. man. Well, we've been at this for a while. So, think, friends, friends, think about the things you would put on your bucket list, right? So, what are the things, when we say go do the thing, that's your battle cry, right? Go do the thing. What are the things you're thinking about when that transpires in your head? You know, where do you want to go? Who do you want to meet? Is there something you want to get to maybe not make your life better, but happier? You know, something, that, you know, and, and or or somebody you would like to talk to, you know, or you know, just think about that stuff and talk to us about it. You know, John, you guys are you, you're always amazing at putting in the, uh, the your two cents in. Elizabeth, want to hear from you as well, uh, you know, and all of our friends in between. So, guys, kind of kind of let us know. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we haven't done a proper one in a while, but we have a question of the week. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dudes and dudettes and all points in between. We hope you're having a great day. I hope you're having some fun listening to us. I know we, as usual, are having fun chatting with each other, as we like to do, about all things geeky and entertaining. So, uh, Daniel-san. Yes? I, I believe it's your turn to pick a number. My turn? Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, not look at a number. Um, I'm going to do 277. 277. All right. Which is... What secret conspiracy would you like to start? <laughs> <laughs> Chris oh, Chrissy has started Harding. a lot. Chrissy Harding needs to be a part of this conversation. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. I think she would have a blast with this one. <laughs> would you like to start? Oh, jeez. Um, I'd like to start. Okay. Oh, conspiracy. this is going to take some thinking here. Um <laughs> Tanya, do you have any ideas off the top of your head? I hope he says, hopefully. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, conspiracy that you want to start. (sighs) Does that mean that there's, there's not already out there or something you want (laughs) to. I don't know. Could it be just some type of rumor that you want to start, or? Uh... Well, yeah, I mean, it's a, that's yeah. how they these get started. It's a, it's a conspiracy, uh, okay. basically, well, the, uh, that you 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 have something in mind that something should be true, and it it probably isn't, but you want people to think that it is. Well, Chris has one like every so many months when he drops the name Mark Hamill. <laughs> yeah <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about <laughs> and Dan's going Chris stop stop <laughs> I almost mentioned it earlier did yeah. you <laughs> yeah <laughs> hey, there's this one account on, or maybe a couple of accounts on TikTok that say I'm from I'm a traveler from the future and this is and this such 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 a day this is going to happen or uh-huh. looking and and I'm like, is that true? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Conspiracy. Secret conspiracy. Would you like to start? Well, um, isn't the moon made of cheese? <laughs> it's old school. <laughs> it's old school silliness. Uh, wow. Yeah, you guys are (laughs) stuck. You are stuck, and this is really kind of interesting in its own way. Well, Um, uh, I don't know. See, I don't want to get political because I just don't feel. I've had enough of that. Yeah. I I remember a T-shirt that I used to um, see frequently, where it's common knowledge 
that in actual fact, um, the entire world is, is actually run by a pipe smoking rabbit named Marvin. Named what? Marvin. 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 Yes. <laughs> so that'll be my conspiracy theory. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is a true story. Yes, it is. That would be a, that's it's there you that's, go. That would be a great one. Oh, brother. That would it's, be a great one. No one noticed when the Earth was blown up and we're back again. So <laughs> that was the real blip. Not that what Marvel said. <laughs> <laughs> that's where Marvel got the idea. <laughs> that's mm. funny. Yeah. No, I, no <laughs> I, I'm doggy paddling right now. I don't have anything. Okay. All right. Well, let's 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 brainstorm something that might be a, a, a fun uh, a fun um, conspiracy podcast topic down the road is making uh, conspiracy theories happen. <laughs> you know, and, and what is, what is your favorite conspiracy theory, and does it exist or or should it? You know, that kind of a thing. So that'll be a future podcast. We'll, we'll make Especially sure. fun fun ones, not yeah. these not these uh not these serious ones. Yeah, that's some fun ones. Right. That works. I'm good with that. That works. Oh, okay. that the theory that Baby Yoda is actually real. <laughs> it's not a puppet <laughs> after all. It's it's an actual creature, and they've been you know they've been uh, they've been showcasing it be, by by virtue of of um, creating a TV show around it. And this is that's how we they, they desensitize us to these real aliens that are out there. They're I absolutely. You know, they're, they're, there you go. You there know, ET was a, is a real alien. They just made a movie to so we can desen- to cover desensitize. And so they when make he, them really, he really for cute. real. Yeah, yeah. Uh, visit for real. Where we're not as a, you know, all these alien movies they're they're real. I love you guys. I really. Do. That's <laughs> hilarious. Awesome. All right. Well, we'll let each other off the hook on that one. So I think I think we'll just we'll just call it a wrap at that point. What do you say? That sounds, sounds good. good. Sounds good. Sounds fair. All right. So, so, um, hey, Dan. Hey, Chris. Um, hey, hey, Dan. Hey, you're Chris, right? Chris? I believe Chris? so. Last time okay. I checked. Chris, yes. Yes. Um, hit it. Because this has been MMC's Monkey Business. Your, oh, God, let's do that again. Wow. <laughs> see, see, it's not as easy as you said it was. Yeah. How many times do I screw it up? <laughs> Word. I did it. I've done it three times in twelve months. You've done it three times in ten minutes. Okay. No, excuse me, in two minutes. So, children. Um, yes. Mm-hmm. All right. So, taking a breath, <laughs> and I'm going to say, hit it. Because this has been MMC's Monkey Business, produced by the Mighty Monkey Corporation, purveyors and producers of the Flower City Comic Con, coming at you like a spider monkey on September 25th and 26th of 2021 at the Total Sports Experience in Gates. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, follow us on Instagram, follow us wherever we go, and we will lead you to where the entertainment is. You guys have a great week. Have a safe week, and we will talk to you again next week. Dun, 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 dun.